<coughs> almost every other slide's got a clip. And there's like 30. So, all right, good morning, everybody. Oh, wait. three, two, one, take two. Thank you very much. Are we ready to go? That's probably interference from my wireless card. Thank you for calling Net, a new age consulting service company where everything clicks into place. Our staff is currently unavailable because they are partying like rock stars. Huh. Well, sound is really important here, so if we can get decent sound, that'd be great. I don't know if it's the cable or so. <coughs> so who's awake at noon? And the rest of you are just sort of semi-conscious and looking for a place to, to nod off. Uh, this is the first year that I've actually been here for, a, for an extended period of time for Nauticon, which is kind of interesting. But uh, one hell of a conference. A lot of really interesting content. I feel uh, privileged to be here and talking with you. Various scenarios, so... Uh, so what, she, what do you want me to do? Just go ahead and start or start yakking or? I don't, perf personally, I don't. <coughs> I'm wondering if it's this power cable. All right, well, I'll just go ahead and uh, get started here to so not to waste too much time. Uh, my name is uh, Greg Beanline. I uh, go by the nickname Damon, have for about the past 20 years. Uh, just a little bit of information about me if you want to get in touch with me, if you have any questions about anything I'm going to talk about today, reach me at my email address or you can reach me also uh, on irc.oftc.net, Channel Ohio Linux. Um, I am the Chief Technical Officer, Vice President of a company called Entunet. Uh, we are the people that are providing your bandwidth for the, the, uh, the opportunity for you guys to, to hack on the net. Interesting thing, we, uh, we actually got reports of about 600 uh, port scans yesterday as soon as we brought the network up, so <laughs> it's interesting. Uh, we've been in business for about 11 years and we provide ISP admission critical hosting. And we have a help desk. And uh, that's what I'm here to talk about today is some of the, some of the things we've done in the help desk. Um, over the years, I've, uh, I thought I had collected a fairly unique uh, collection of help desk information over the years. But unfortunately, what I found out is that most of the stuff that had been forwarded to me in email and all that was actually has been archived on other websites. So uh, <coughs> I actually uh, will we'll plug those websites here in a little bit so you can go and download more content like it. But I uh, just wanted to talk a little bit about help desk basics before we get into the funny stuff. Um, obviously, a help desk is, working in a help desk is a very stressful condition. By show of hands, how many people have actually had help desk positions? All right, so you know. You know. You guys are always wrong. The customer is always right. And no matter what happens, you guys are going to get abused at every step of the way. I mean, it's like... The minute a customer calls a help desk, they expect that uh, all, all senses of grace and, and dignity go away and that you're just an object on the other end of the phone. So one of those things is, is that they teach you in help desk school is to always respect the customers and give them plenty of time to vent and get their stuff out of the way, try to diffuse tension as much as possible, and by all means, don't take it personally. Although. Some of the examples of help desk uh, calls that I'm going to play today, I mean, I couldn't help but take it personally. I don't know how some of these people actually deal with it. But uh, some of the interesting things, uh, 
uh, just just kind of cracked me up. Um, Dr. Frank Rizzo. Is anybody familiar with the Jerky Boys? Yeah, okay. Does everybody know who Frank Rizzo is? Rizzo, R-I-Z-Z-O. Well, <clears throat> a couple of years ago, we started getting a lot of telemarketing calls that would actually end up in our help desk, and we got really kind of aggravated with it. So we took snippets of the Jerky Boys CD of Dr. Frank Rizzo, or Frank Rizzo, really, and we sn snapped them together and put them into voicemail box 666 so that whenever any telemarketer called, we would transfer them to box 666, and Dr. Frank Rizzo would leave them a, a nifty, you know, would say, ah, leave a message. This is Frank Rizzo. I'll call you back. He's now averaging about six calls a week. He's on several mailing lists. He gets about 50 pieces of mail monthly. Uh, we've actually elevated him to, to the status of a PhD now so that when, when they call in, our tech will basically tell the customers or the telemarketers, please call him doctor. He gets very aggravated because he worked very hard for his PhD. Um, and apparently he sets appointments with copier salesmen on a regular basis whereby the copier salesman will come into our office and say, yes, I have an appointment with, with uh, Dr. Frank Rizzo. And of course, our front office secretary, you know, says, hold on one moment, comes in the back, starts busting out laughing. And we have to go up to the front and tell these poor copier salesmen that that's a fict fictional character that doesn't exist. And it's only there so that we don't have to talk to Quest, SBC, or all of the other I, you know, IP providers that call us or people that want to sell us equipment or headhunters that want to call us and steal our, our employees or anything that you can imagine. I mean, we've gotten Viagra calls as well. It's like phone spam. So um, when we redid our phone system not too long ago, we recently, uh, we recently gave him the Employee of the Month Award. And so if you're on hold in our phone system, you can hear messages where we, we talk about uh, Frank's achievements. And it's become something of a, of a joke. So So that's one of the things that, you know, I don't take anything too seriously, especially when it comes to you know, sarcasm and humor, I, I just I just can't take myself seriously, so I don't really take very much else seriously. <coughs> um, the other thing was uh, what we called uh, press 7 for a beer. Uh, when we were redoing our phone system a couple of years ago, uh, I had asked everybody to review the script, and just for, for a gag, I put in a message at, at him that said press 7 for a cold beer. And this really has nothing to do with the help desk, but it's funny as hell anyways. Um, so I figured I would give it to my, you know, my managers and let them review it and tell them if they had any comments, you know, figuring that if they didn't catch this, they weren't reading it. Well, no one caught it. And so I said, what the hell, I'm leaving it in. So we left it in our menu, and uh, to this day, it's still there. It's, it's evolved a little bit, but you can try it for yourself if you want to dial that phone number and press 7 for a beer. Uh, but, uh, I mean, we, we get these waves of calls that'll come in on their phone system. All of a sudden we'll see we've got a, you know, we've got, you know, 30 lines just taken up by people calling and pressing seven. And, uh, it, it seems to go like in a, you know, there's no real pattern to it, but what starts to build and, you know, I'm like, what the hell is this? And then I found out somebody forwarded me a copy of an email that had our phone number in it. And it came from some AOL user. And it was CC'd to like 30 other people. It said, you got to press this. you gotta, you got to call this number and press it. And uh, I was like, wow, that's uh, probably the best thing we've ever done for advertising without knowing it. So uh, we, we kept it in there and it's still in there now. So you can try it yourself if you'd like. Um, but funny things to do with phone systems. And, you know, uh, a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of our customers will call us and say, I'm, I'm glad that you have that in there. We've had one or two complaints about people who are alcoholics and say that that's not appropriate. And we've got to say, well, thanks. Uh, we've heard you, but too bad. Um, but uh, generally, we leave it in there. And uh, our customers have said, thank you, for, thank you for having that. It makes me laugh every time I call. Um, we've, we, you know, the other thing about the help desk is there are some really wacky people in this world, OK? And we've had our share of very wacky customers. And I see some people laughing because they understand. Uh, it's kind of scary because the first name on this list is a lady by the name of Michelle Bika. OK, this lady would call us three or four times a day about her internet not working for whatever reason. Well, she stopped calling one day. And we were like, we've, we felt a little deprived because we hadn't spoken to Michelle in a while. And uh, 
saw a news story on CNN about somebody in Ravenna that had gone over and killed their neighbor and taken the baby out of the lady's stomach. Turned out to be Michelle Bika. So we said, wow, we need to be real careful about what we say to customers on the phone or else somebody's going to come up and go postal. And speaking of going postal, uh, for a very short period of time, Biswanath Halder, who if you're in Cleveland, you know who this guy is. He, was a, he took an AK-47 and, and uh, Tech-9, sorry, and went, uh, went and decided he was going to pursue some evil man at Case and shot up the place and expended some 400 plus rounds and hit one person. Uh, three, sorry. Killed one. Anyways, nothing really to laugh about, but, of, you know, this guy was whacked out. And it, it just, it scares you a little bit. So there's some things out there that, you know, when people call in for the help desk, you don't want to piss them off too much. So we've kind of taken a very, uh, very liberal tone and, and just not to, don't really want to, want to aggravate people. Um, then we have Edwin the engineer. And uh, Edwin drinks a lot and calls for tech support a lot. And he's not even a customer anymore. He moved to a cable modem, but he still calls a lot. And uh, he, every time he calls, he says, I'm Edwin and I'm an engineer. And my question to him when I get a call from him is, well, what train do you drive? Um, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, if you're an engineer, you'd think you might be able to figure out how to make a modem work. So we have all sorts of interesting customer complaints that we get. Uh, you must have changed protocols on me. Uh, no? didn't do that sorry but you you know are you guys down no there's 4,000 other dial-up users on well stop cutting me off well we're not cutting you off you have an idle timeout and your modem sucks well why are you spying on me uh, okay get your tinfoil hat on please stop sending me all this filth we picked up uh, one of the the acquisitions we did we picked up a uh, uh, an ISP that does filtered access for um, family friendly browsing and um, the, um, their email filtering system had stopped working a couple of months before we, we picked them up. So after we bought their customer base, all we got was complaints about the massive amounts of porn that were coming into their boxes. We sort of fixed that. But. And then my favorite is all of the day traders that call up and say, I just lost $7 million because I couldn't make that trade. And our comment to them is, if you just lost $7 million, why are you on a dial-up connection? Don't you think you should put a T1 in your house? Well, I can't afford that. Well, I thought you just lost $7 million. I mean, dial-up's 20 bucks. Like, we can put a T1 in your house for 500 bucks a month. Yeah. So it's kind of interesting. I mean, when, when customers are on the other end of the phone, they tend to just, I just go off. And I don't, I mean, I don't know what to say other than it's, it's amazing the amount of, of stuff that, that happens. So I've been collecting a lot of outrageous phone calls for a while. Uh, some of them have been sent to me in email. People have linked to them to me. Um, and uh, I thought I had a pretty unique collection until I found these two websites called uh, techcomedy.com and phonelosers.org. Um, techcomedy.com basically has funny tech support stories, things to, to sort of lighten up the, the stress that you might experience while you're working in the help desk. And a lot of, I've got some calls from both of those websites. And then phonelosers.org, these guys are a freaking group from the 90s. And uh, I don't know a whole lot about them other than they've done some really funny stuff. They, they like to, you know, get into phone systems and, uh, you know, redirect the calls through the phone system using DISA to, to their phone number. And they'll take calls for that company. So we have a couple of those. Now, these guys, these guys have also taken over drive through you know, 900 megahertz drive through headsets and cause all sorts of chaos. And... And they have one, one, uh, one thing where they actually uh, hit, hit out in a dumpster and tapped into the line for a recorded uh, movie announcement. They actually did a podcast about this. And uh, at a movie theater, they tapped into the phone line. Well, okay. Hey, people know more about it than I do. So I'm just, I just find it quite entertaining that, that the types of calls they would... Call pe people would call up and they'd just be totally rude to them. So, you know, coming from an environment where you actually have taking, you know, very stressful calls, some of that stuff is kind of comedic. So, I've got uh, examples of some of these calls, which hopefully we can, uh, we can get through here. This particular customer is having marital problems and wants his account canceled. 
because uh saved message Sunday 9:24 a.m. Hello, I need my this, uh, my internet disconnected. My wife thinks I'm screwing other women off the internet, so I just want to disconnect it because it's causing too many other marital problems. All right, thank you. There's something about personal information that people feel comfortable leaving on voicemails. I don't know what it is, but uh, obviously this guy has a, has a, has having some problems. So. Um, I, I do have to warn you, some of this stuff is a little bit uh, on the, some of it's a little bit racy. Uh, I don't think there's anything that's really too vulgar, but uh, just, just be warned. If you're squeamish, you might want might to duck out now. <coughs> so here's another example of the customer is always right. Uh, this particular customer, I think, was calling some sort of Canon or tech support or some sort of computer tech support line. and. Uh, and by God, he's going to get his problem taken care of. Committing this call, and if you purposely break the mouse, it will not be covered by warranty. Oh, well, you're going to have to prove that, okay? Uh, it's in your warranty agreement, sir. We do, no, not, no, we do not request no misuse and abuse. I want, there is no misuse and abuse. If you purpose, me a new mouse. Sir, if you purposely Give break, me a new mouse. Sir, if you purposefully break Give the mouse. Give me a new mouse. Sir, if you Give me a new mouse. Sir, if you purposely break the mouse, I want a new fucking mouse. It doesn't work. Give me a goddamn supervisor. Thank you. Can I Sir, I do need to warn you. That I need to warn you. I don't need to warn you. I don't want any documentation. Thank you. I'm Sir? 25 years old. You just I've been told. To reply to this message, press with. What the hell? <laughs> I don't even know what to say about that, but if I. I wouldn't have been on the phone that long with the guy. <laughs> I would have been. And it was all over a mouse, which is what, a $6 part now? Oh, all right. So, yeah, somebody's going to have a heart attack over something like that. This is a pretty famous one, which I can't trace where it came from, but. Uh, this is a guy by the name of Stephen Thrasher who's uh, calling about his laptop and he needs this information. Hello, um, my name is Stephen Thrasher and I set my Canon laptop computer into. I just got it back. Everything that I've written on it for the past two years is gone. I was told that you guys were going, that, that I'd be called if you had to replace the hard drive. I called Canon. They said the hard drive didn't need to be replaced. They just said the motherboard didn't need to be replaced. And everything that I've been working on for the past two goddamn fucking years of my life is gone. You fucking assholes. Now I want you to call me back. Stop fucking me around and make so that I get back what I've been working on. Do you fucking understand me? And I'm tired of you fucking around with me. I had better get my goddamn disk drive back. I'm going to sue all of you fucking pieces of shit. All right. That's, that's one of those interesting things that he's ending with, I'm going to sue you. And I can't, I can't even estimate how many times people have sent us letters and, and have complained to us about the fact that they're going to sue us because their internet doesn't work or, or they lost $7 million. Um, the funniest thing we got, which I actually don't have a copy of it, I couldn't find it to, to put it in the slide, was a letter that was written very poorly with, with many grammatical and spelling errors from somebody who was a legal secretary who was threatening to sue us you know, under these clauses of Ohio Revised Code, which, as far as we knew, didn't exist. So it was kind of interesting. But uh, I don't know. People just take the, take the perspective that they can pretty much do, do whatever they want. Now, this, one, this one's interesting. This, everybody, everybody's seen South Park? Now, Uncle Ned with the, the little the throat mic. I, I got to gotta right, guess that that's what I this guy's you. using. Okay, can I have, what is your username? What is my username? Yes, what is your username? Can you tell me what my username is? No, you'd have to tell me, sir. What is your username, please? No, what is your username? Yes, the username is the name that you use to log on to the internet with. Yes, I need to know my username. Yes, you will have to tell me what your username is, please, sir. That I need a username. 
Sir, I cannot supply you with a username. You must be able to supply me with a username so that I can look up your account details. That's right, I need a username. Sir, if we continue with this type of conversation, I will have to hang up on you. Can you please give me that username? I don't have a username. Okay, sir. You have a username. Okay, sir, I'm sorry, but I can't help you with that. If you continue this way, we will get nowhere. You are going to have to supply me with a username, otherwise I cannot help you. I need a username. How do I get a username? Okay, sir, do you have an account? I have a $20 a month by a three hour account. Okay, sir, well you've come through to the wrong department. What you need to do is talk to our technical support people. They're the ones who have that type of account. So I'm going to need a name so that I can give to them so they can actually find that account for you. So, sir, can I please have your first and your surname? My name is Max Size Ram. Your name is Max Size Ram, is it? Size Ram. Okay. Now, if you just hop the line, please, Max, what I'm going to do is put you through to our uh, people and they'll be able to help you. Okay, Max? No, uh, can you help me? No, I can't, Max. I have a business. You have a business, yes Max, I realise that. But the type of accounts that you've actually uh, told me, uh, specified... Max, we're actually getting nowhere with this type of conversation. Max, are you definitely sure that you have an account? Yes. Okay. Well Max, if you can't help me with the username, Max, I'm going to have to terminate this call. I have other people waiting. And if you can't actually supply me with the information I need to help you, this is pointless for both of us. Okay, no Max, you're not trying. I'm oh. trying. No? I'm trying to do a dimension. You're trying to do a what? No, that's not what you told me, Max. You told me that you already had an account. You've told me what type of account you've already had. I need a username. Yeah, Max. I need a username so I can get on the internet. Max, that's not what you've told me in the beginning. In the beginning, you told me that you do have an account. So you actually lied to me. Is that correct, Max? No, I Max? Max? Max, you actually lied to me, didn't you? You actually gave me false information. You told me... No, I'm not. You told me that you had an account with us. Hey, one. Yes? Me. Yeah, I knew it was you. That's why I was going on. Uh, Max, Max, there is one thing I'm going to have to tell you. Max, you shit me, okay? I have had it up to here with this type of... Everybody's looking at me now. <laughs> now, obviously... Uh... There we go. Now, obviously, that was a prank, and there's lots of other good ones like that here down the line. How am I doing on time, by the way? Good, good, good. All right, so that's Max Sideswam, who says he needs a username. Obviously, that's one of his friends. Now, Cowboy Jim, though, has a legitimate complaint against Rhonda. Yes, this message is for Rhonda. Tell her to call Jim. And if anybody else gets this, I would like to talk to the general manager of this outfit. This person is an absolute disgrace. She hung up on me. She has no reason to hung up on me. I have a legitimate complaint against your goddamn service. And why can't I talk to anybody? Why do you people always ignore me? You are a bunch of fucking cunt! Now get your fucking calls off! Get here right now, you fucking bitch! You're nothing but a fucking whore! Bye! I mean, if you're going to leave a message like that, it's going to get recorded and shared on the internet. I'm sorry. Stuff like that just cannot remain on a mail si a voicemail system for too long. So that's kind of funny. This, it's, this is all stuff from techsupportcomedy.com. Now, this is, a, this is an interesting one. Customers always know more than you do. You have no idea you're some idiot on the other end of the phone, and, and Mark's going to prove that for us. <laughs> Thank you for calling Amtrak Benefit Services. My name is Kim. How may I help you? Yes, I'd like to speak to the manager, please. Okay, hold on one moment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to Yes. I'm going to transfer you over to Sherman. Hold on one moment. Okay, that's not the manager I want. I want your office manager. And there is a note in my uh, file stating that I am to be connected to her. Who notice would that the, be then? Notice sir? the enunciation. Uh, my name is Mark Hurd. That's and she is above. She is the boss. But I don't know who that is. You don't know who your boss is on. She works, she runs your office. Okay, sir. I have Sherman. And that's, he, that is no. my manager. 
no, I don't want your manager. I want the office manager, the woman who runs this We don't have outfit. a office yes, manager. Yes, you do. I've spoken to her. What's she your is name? A, she is above Rita. Okay, we have, this is a new office, sir. We don't have a Rita in this office. Okay, as of 1-1 one, one of 03, we've moved to a new office, and there is no Rita here. Well, I don't want to, I want to speak to Sherman's boss. Thank you. Okay, Sherman is the only one that's available. Well, I'm sorry. I want to speak to Sherman's boss. Sir, uh, I will, uh, I will, available. Uh, I will call Amtrak. That, sir, I would be more than happy to transfer you to Sherman. I do not want to speak to a supervisor. I want to speak to the person who runs that office. And that would be Sherman, sir. That is not Sherman. Here we go. Sir, I don't think you're understanding. Yeah, they are fucking manager now! Sir? Do you understand me? Now! Not Sherman! The office manager! Now! You yell at me and use that word with me again, sir. I will do this call. Do yeah, not you do scream it, at me like that again and use that F word. Fuck! <laughs> and that's it. Uh, it. I don't know. What, what is it about being on the other end of the phone that, that makes people think they can get away with this kind of stuff when they call you? I mean, I don't know. It's very comedic, but in some ways, bad. we have a sad society when people just think they can do that. So this is where I, I turn around. What if the tables were turned? The Phone Losers of America, that freaking group I was mentioning, has a CD of prank calls and telephone tricks that's, uh, I don't think, about 700 calls on there. And... Uh, Specifically, they've done some pretty funny stuff where they've taken over help desks and just, you know, what, what, if, what if when you called the help desk, the texts were rude to you? I mean, how would that make you feel? So we have a couple of examples of that where they've done this. Here's uh, Sheila, who's Technical support. Uh -huh. taking some questions from the user. Can I help you? Who is this? This is Sheila. Okay, I have a question. Um, when I'm, like, trying to connect to tell me what number I have to put in when it says, um, like, number on there? No, I have no fucking idea. <laughs> Hello? Yes. Okay. Do you have another question for me? Um, yeah, can you tell me if I'm access to next? How the fuck should I know? I have no fucking idea. What kind of fucking questions are these? Where the fuck do you get these from? I mean, what do you say to that? If you call a help desk and somebody's like, no, I have no clue. I mean, what would be your response to that? I'd kind of be going... So, I don't know. So here's Sheila again, and she's, she's trying to help a customer with a broken email. How can I help you? I've got a problem. You got, baby. With my email. All right. I'm listening. Um, when I send it, it's got... Uh from me, at the top it's got my name, and, and then in parentheses it's got MailNet. How do I get... Uh-oh. Did we lose it? Oh. Well... I could, uh, I suppose I could unplug it from here and just use the throat mic to listen to it. Yeah, let's try that. Oh, that's much better. All right, so I'll just see if I can turn up the volume here a little bit. And go back and replay that. Let me know if you can hear this or not. Maybe that one's broken. <laughs> Here's one. This guy's calling about his wife's account and wants to know about the teacher discount, which they 
Sierra Mountain used to tell them that the new owners don't agree with that, so they're going to charge them full price. losing some files here but all right well the other thing that these guys did was they would just say one word the whole time cactus so people would call up for support and this is what they would hear I'm really confused too. What does that mean? Cactus. 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 What does that mean? Cactus. Will you please help me now? Cactus. I don't understand. Cactus. Cactus. What is that? What do you, what do you want me to do here? You're, you're confusing me, sir. Cactus. 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 <laughs> Who's gonna stay on the phone for a minute? I mean, cactus. cactus. This caller is also confused about cactus. and on. Uh, I don't know. Uh, this is a, a, f a fun thing we used, we used to do when, when I was uh, uh, under the age of 18. We used to do this all the time. We used to, we used to pretend we were a human IVR system, and they have some good examples of that, which are kind of funny. I mean, I'm not sure how I would react if I got this on the other end. Thank you for calling Internet Technical Support. If you're calling for technical support, press 1. why these are cutting out but basically then she presses zero and he goes I can't believe you fell for that <laughs> hangs up on her 
<clears throat> and here's another example of that. Thank you for calling Internet Services. If you're calling for technical support, press 1. If you're calling for customer service, press 2. If you'd like to speak to an operator, press 0. I didn't understand the button you pressed. Press it a little fucking harder. Press the button harder! <laughs> Okay, people will fall for that. Okay, here's one that's interesting. You got to listen closely to what uh, what they have her spell for her username. Hello. Hello, is this uh, uh, the internet? That would be me. I'm the internet. Okay, I've got a senior memory going off here. Oh, okay. <laughs> I forgot what my user ID and password were. This is Nancy Nelson. I thought I had them the same, but evidently it's not. Okay. Uh, do you have a copy of that for me? Oh, yeah. It's, um... Here, no. right, okay, you have a pencil? Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's, um, S-H. What's this, the ID? Oh, yeah, this is the ID for you. Okay, S-H. Uh-huh. I-T-H. I-T-H. E-A-D. E-A-D. <laughs> what? That's not me. I didn't use that. <laughs> Uh, that's definitely not my ID. And that's that's pretty much all I have. I have a whole bunch of other stuff, but I didn't know how much time this was going to take. I, I would love to hear stories from other people about actual experiences they've had. If we could get a mic to, to walk around, is that possible? Or I'll just walk around with this. Sure. All right. So anybody else? Does anybody else have any tech support uh, stories? All right. Go ahead. <clears throat> Here, talk into the mic. I uh, used to work for Midwest Micro doing phone support, and we would sell uh, uh, PCs to University of Dayton. So we'd have a lot of U UD students call him. And uh, I was helping train a guy, and he put uh, this guy, a college student, on mute instead of on hold. <clears throat> and he told him, oh, hey, I'll be right back. Well, I'm plugged in, I'm listening, and while he's talking to the Tier 3 tech, and in the background, we hear knock, knock, knock. The door comes in, we're like, hey, baby, blah, blah, blah. And this guy and this other girl proceed to have sex while we're sitting there listening to it. And they're just going at it, and things you can hear things getting knocked over, and they're just, like, going all over the place. And then finally, he's like, the, the uh, CSR picks up the line. He's like, sir? Sir? He's like, God damn it, I'm done. I'm done, baby. Oh, yeah. Hello? <laughs> and that, that, that is, and then, then he just hung up on us. You gotta wonder how many of these things are staged. But anybody else have any uh, any experiences they'd like to share? All right, we have a we have a winner over there. Go ahead, just talk into the little mic thing. This guy here. That's it. Yeah. So go. is this gonna work? I have a sound clip too. Oh, go ahead, play it. Right. Yeah, just put it next to the speaker. Uh, this is a sound clip of a guy that called in. Is actually a business. I don't. Uh, that's not it. But I don't think he says anything <laughs> too uh, too detrimental. But he just talks about how his internet connection goes down, and then I don't know. I think it's funny, but <laughs> we'll see what you guys think. And I had never previously spoke with this guy, so I didn't know that it anything was ongoing. Yeah. Neither did anybody else. And I asked them all. It's not very loud. Hmm. It's not working out very good, huh? Well, that's all right. Why don't you?
have actually went down a total of five times today. Um, the problem of going up and down is still an ongoing problem. Um, uh, you know what, I don't think anybody really cares. Thanks. Bye. No one cares. Well, anyways, he, he's talking and... Give us the blow by blow, yeah. He just says, well, you know, my internet connection went down twice in the last 20 minutes. Went down five times today. So I guess we still got something on going. And he just stops. He makes this weird muttering noise. He's like, you know what? I don't think anybody really cares. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but he says thanks at the end. <laughs> hey, at least he's polite. Yeah. I mean, it's better than telling you, you're a fucking asshole. So we, we right. called him and asked him why we don't care. <laughs> he's, he's like, well, it's just frustrating. I'm like, no kidding. This one's kind of from the other side. I had to call up my company's help desk because they made some network changes and they, they pointed our DNS on our desktop machines to a server that didn't exist. It's like, uh-oh. So I called them up and I must have gotten some new guy and he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, all right, well, can you just like bump me up to your tier two support? Or, and... The guy's like, I don't know how to do that. It's like, well, can you just transfer me to somebody? Well, I, I, I'm sorry. And, and the guy's like real apologetic and everything, right? And so finally he says, well, maybe if you just call back, you'll get somebody else that, that can help you. I'm like, well, all right. I, you know, at least, at least he said just call back. But it's like, man. Yeah. Well, that's, <laughs> a, that's a, believe it or not, that's a, that's a pretty common technique that I use uh, to, to went, I just play like a complete idiot when there's somebody calling that I just don't want to talk to, uh, you know. But uh, anybody else have any stories? Oh, we got lots. I feel like Phil Donahue. <laughs> Hello. <coughs> I had the misfortune of being a tech at Best Buy for a couple of years, and uh, this was pre Geek Squad. Never Geek Squad. Uh, <coughs> This is more, this, we had walk-up support in addition to phone support, so this is actually a walk-up story, but it's the same thing. <coughs> well, first of all, we had people bring in computers that had uh, live cockroaches living in them. We had a guy bring in a computer that um, he kept his weed in the computer and brought it to us. Uh, we had a guy <coughs> who... Um, the question is, is, after you fixed it, did you give it back? <laughs> Not allowed to say. Uh, and then we, we had another, we had a, a woman um, bring in uh, a computer that had live mice living in it. Somehow they had got, there was like a, like a, one of the panels, PCI slots, they had gotten in there and made a little nest and we opened it up and like three or four mice came leaping out at us. But um, as we had a guy who was, uh, we had a customer who was, um, he would come in like every, three or four weeks and was getting porn all over his computer somehow and um, <coughs> was just livid that we didn't cover any software problems, especially him having an addiction to pornography. So he's, he's talking to me and I'm like, I can't do anything for you. We, we don't cover software. There's no warranty that covers software that you know Best Buy offers, or at least we didn't at the, at the time. And uh, he's like, he's like, fine. He's like, fuck you. He's like, I don't want to talk to you. He's like, you're just a kid. He's like, <clears throat> he's like, you know, who can I talk with? And uh, I'm like, the only, the only other person, the only like the actual supervisor at the time was this guy named Chad. And Chad was maybe like, Chad was probably like 30, right? Chad comes up and he's like, I can help you. And he's like, I don't want to talk to you either. You're just a kid. And our the highest up guy was on lunch, and his name was Doug. Doug comes back. Doug is younger than Chad, and he's and he's like he's like I don't want to talk to you. You're just a kid. So Doug comes up and he's like he's like he's like how can I help you? And Doug, uh, Doug looked like he was like 11. And th so so every time this guy would ask like who you know I I don't want to talk to you. So eventually got to the point where every single person in the tech bay had come up to the window saying that they were the supervisor, and eventually he just like stormed out of the <laughs> of the store and he never came back. So. Uh, that's great stuff. Uh, you know, how do you stay calm in the face of adversity, right? <laughs> all right, we had a, a couple more questions. Uh, we, how much time we got? Ten minutes. Ten minutes, all right. Another question? Yeah, we got somebody over here. <clears throat> Every question, by the way, gets you a raffle ticket, if you're not aware. That's why I'm telling my lame anecdote. <laughs> I worked for uh, GE, but I worked in uh, financial 
stuff uh, for a while. So anyways, like when we call help desk, we had to talk to somebody in India that wouldn't fix your problem if you knew what your problem was. Because God knows if you're not in IT, you don't know what you're talking about. So like uh, one day I just needed my email password changed because the manager had reset everyone's email password. And so I knew if I called and said, you know, like, hey, I need my email password changed, they'd still run me through the list from top to bottom, and 30 minutes later, I'd eventually get an email change or a password change. So I called, and they were like, you know, thank you. Uh, this is Alex. And I'm like, right. And they're like, this is Alex. How can I help you? And, uh, and I'm like, I can't read my email. And, and they're like, what? I was like, I, I can't read my email. And, and they're like, okay, well, what's the problem? I'm like, well my email and they're like yeah and I'm like I can't read it <laughs> and then they ran me through the list and I 30 minutes later I got my password changed <laughs> yeah, get, hooray for outsourcing yeah that that's there's there's all sorts of stories about that do we have anybody else that has any comments or questions any other hands in the air Beth you have anything interesting oh we got another one over here I don't. I don't know why uh, both of my stories have to do with sex, but <laughs> this. Uh, you I, I, I think I'm. Out right no, no. <laughs> sorry, no. Um, I was used to work in a call center for uh, Sprint Relay, uh, deaf and hard of hearing TTY call center. Well, um, half the time you've got uh, hearing carryover and voice carryover, where your client may have small amounts of hearing and stuff. Well, your operator is not allowed to to put any inflection whatsoever in the voice uh, when they relay to the, to the person that can actually hear. And we would have this guy every week, like clockwork, Saturday at like 10 p.m., he would call a 900 dial-a-porn number. And we, like, I would come in and I would know a precisely whose phone he was on because you would see, you would see an operator, they were like, it was, you had to have somebody on hand because somebody's sitting there going, Oh baby, oh baby, touch me again. And they'd, they'd have to hit the mute and start busting out laughing. They'd unjack and the next operator would come in and pick up in the middle. <laughs> and, uh, and they're like busting out and they're trying not to, try not to assume things and not to say anything. And in the middle of the, in the, middle of the, the call, the, the, the lady on the, on the, the porn number is like, what's going on? And the, the operator's like, uh, there's nothing going on. What can I do for you? Please uh, address the, you know, the, the caller, not me. Like, the voice keeps changing. <laughs> and they're like, uh, the operators ha have, are having technical difficulties. And like, you're having 30 technical difficulties? Because it keeps changing. Like, because we had three people, and they would have to keep changing out. And there was, was some pretty sick and raunchy stuff. <laughs> and, like, and like, half the time, it's like on, mu on mute, and you have like an eight second buffer in there. So, like, if you're busy laughing or you got a sneeze or something like that, it'll buffer the audio, and then you catch up with it. And we, ha we had a, uh, a manager come over, and he's, he's deaf. And he picks up uh, the earpiece for his uh, for his hearing aid, and he's having trouble. He has a speech impairment because of it. And out of nowhere, like you hear the the um, 900 number babe start laughing her ass off because out of nowhere you got you got a guy that's got a speech impediment, and it goes from girl girl to a guy with a speech impediment, and like everybody's busting out. She's like, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this, and hangs up on on the caller. <laughs> And like we're sitting there, like we can't tell our caller that she can't do this, and hangs up. We didn't know what to do, so we just dropped the call. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, yeah. We, that that got me thinking because they have a whole section on deaf relay calls, which are just hilarious. These guys would get into bridges. And here. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm trying to find. Here it is, dueling, dueling relay ops. While on a conf, we get two different relay operators to talk to each other. Apologize for the uh, speed of my uh, ancient... Yes, I can say, sir, would you please repeat from the beginning, please? I have typed back to the caller one moment, please. I don't know what the fuck you just said, little kid. But you're special. One moment, say that. You're special. Continue. You reached out and you touched a brother heart. Go ahead. Do you think the 
relay is one, 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 one moment, please. You can go ahead. The caller has to type back to you. One moment, please. And now I will reach out and touch a brother's penis. Go ahead. Penis? Huh? Go ahead. Yes, penis. Go ahead. <laughs> Midgets are cool. Go ahead. Listening to this relay talk is hilarious. We're going to turn it over to Froggy now to do something like draw names or I don't know what's next. 